probably in a year going to Section 8 welfare. You see, it exacerbated the problem. Rents have soared. Housing became less affordable. Homelessness increased. Poverty increased. The wealth imbalance increased. The disparity increased. All these problems flourished and increased. And uh, this is what I mean about falling far. Our problems are etched in stone. It's going to be so traumatic to try to extricate ourselves from these problems at this point. So that's why I say we need sea changes of biblical proportions. We need a reset of reality, basically. Right. Have no faith in the world system. You know, they have no faith in the flesh like the Bible says. Faith in God alone. The world system, remember, Jesus said that the prince of this world is Satan. This is his domain until he returns. Even though he won victory on the cross with his death, his willing to die for our sins, to pay the price for our sins, the ransom, and to be resurrected, we had victory then, but it's taking these thousands of years to play itself out before his return. To ready us, that you have a chance to latch on to that grace that he brought and gave us, and, you know, that uh, Holy Spirit of truth is for all of us to reach out to and... Um, You know, we can trust those that are righteous and by their fruits, by the th their beliefs, you know, the things they espouse. We can trust certain people and um, we've got to be able to trust some people, but we can't trust this system. No way, man. It, it's been it's been um, built by some uh, some miserable, miserable people, some monsters. They should have very shaky faith in uh you know, I personally have very shaky faith in the state of awareness of a vast swath of human beings. That's why I've got to have faith in God, because I just don't think that people are really ready. They're, they see their own self-interest uh, as being involved in, in the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And it's too traumatic. They can't let it go. So they rationalize that subtle form of hypocrisy. And I'm sorry. It's not that I give up on them, but I just cannot be overly invested. I can't throw my pearls before swine. It's going to come down to every man for himself, standing before God one-on-one -on -one and explaining our beliefs and why we prescribe to those beliefs. And economics are very, very important to God. Remember, it's the root of all evil, the love of money, the root of all evil. So if we love money more than we love the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, what do you think you're going to get? You're going. You're not going to a better realm. You're going to be around like-minded people, okay? That love money more than they love God. That love dishonesty more than they love God. The things of this world. Hypoc hypocrites all go to the same place. That's rationalizers, okay? It doesn't matter. So you've got to beware. Be be very be on your guard. Remember, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, as it's written. All of us. A man's wealth is not in, the, you know, in his possessions and his money. You know, what would a man give for his soul? Remember those things. Have a healthy fear of God, that deep reverence for God and pleasing him above all else, realizing that's how we're going to find happiness is in pleasing him and nothing else. And working for him, and that means working for your fellow man. We got the MSM uh, poll. Americans think it's bad. Um, oh Jesus! I didn't elaborate enough on this. That uh, about. Um, oh, they're talking about Trump's economic plan. That's what they. That most Americans think it's bad, and you wonder why. I mean, the mainstream media is manipulating everybody's mind out there, and they call it education or information, right? They're manipulating people that believe it's bad, that it's a corporate giveaway, and it's going to be bad for the poor and all this crap. They're a bunch of liars. Okay, so is it any wonder they take a poll with the general public? The general public thinks it's bad too. We're being manipulated by these mind efforts. It's called gaslighting. It's a technique, and they're all reading off the same script at these national-level news. So you understand how this thing works? It's malinformation, deliberately, malevolent information they're, they're handing out. Locally, their uh, officials, are, officials are raising new home costs by 5000 
Let's see, I saw an episode of Forensic Files. And it was these guys, these white supremacists, they're haters of Jesus, that claim they, they call themselves like a branch of Christianity. White supremacists, they hated minorities, they hated homosexuals, etc. Anybody different from themselves. And, um, you know, then you wonder, well, God, how is money involved in that horrible evil? They committed murder. They just cold-bloodedly murdered this gay couple of men, shot them dead in their sleep. And um, you wonder how they stole the guy's credit cards and they used them to the tune of thousands upon thousands of dollars. Money, again, the root of all evil. Somehow it's in there. But in their minds, their sick minds, they say, oh, no, we're, we're the righteous guys. We're Christians, right? Could you imagine that under the guise of Christianity doing that? Melbourne car attack, 19 uh, injured. Oh, and the mainstream media comes out and says, definitely not. Remember, this is it. I mean, if you capture one thing, you got one take on this. This definitely was, was not terrorism. The dude, he's a citizen, Australian citizen. Oh, a side note, he from Afghanistan, immigrant from Afghanistan, and ISIS that likes, this guy's a supporter of ISIS. But it wasn't terrorism. Take that away. No. I mean, it's like, on its face, it's terror. It's terror. Anytime you, you, you snatch a woman's purse, you're a terrorist, okay? You rape a woman, you're a terrorist. Okay, terrorism is terror. If you instill terror in somebody, that fight or flight, you trigger that fight or flight response, you're a terrorist. They're all terrorists, you idiot, MC, mainstream media idiots. Trump's diet. This is he's got to get off the aspartame in this this he, oh my god the damage it's probably too late for him. Donald Trump man if you're listening by chance listen brother. You got to start taking this as to Xanthan. Listen to uh Joe Merkel Dr. Joseph Merkel Mercola and uh, uh the famed neurosurgeon uh Dr. Russell Blaylock. Uh as to Xanthan. Look into as to Xanthan detox. Take activated charcoal. Drink tons of water. Get off the diet soda immediately. Dementia, brain damage, blindness. Okay, it can hit, it come upon you suddenly. Get off that toxic substance. They're trying to kill you, brother. That stuff, and don't drink the other stuff either. The high fructose corn syrup, toxic with the mercury and all that crap. It, it's bad, man. Get off it all. Wean yourself off with natural juices or something, man. But get off that crap immediately. Please look into it. It's toxic poison. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Everything I know about nutrition, I get off that crap immediately. Immediately. All right. Well, that's about all I had to say about this business. I talk a little through the initial speech about some of these, you know, current events, recent events, Donald Trump's budget, you know, picking on the welfare people, and I get it, I get it, but just remember how those welfare people were created. If JFK had gotten his way, there would be no welfare industry, would have sound economic policies, there'd be no poverty in the land, if Jesus Christ had his way, if God had his way, if the American people had their way, that's how it would be. Okay, so just remember who's destroying the worth of our currency through cost of living inflation. A tax. On to some thoughts. Man, I am getting so backed up on my thoughts. Boy. The idea of people thinking of me as a righteous dude suits me fine, but the idea of people thinking of me as a self-righteous dude is disturbing and disgusting. 
Sometimes I wonder silly things, things like why it is that so many people earnestly desire fame while so many others find the idea of being famous repellent. And I'm one of those people. There's a lot of virtue to being a nobody, a lot of perks.